We went to America in 2010 and Larry said, this is going to run a five by the end of the year. Oh. <laughs> I forgot that. I mustn't have heard him. <laughs> well, you pretty well have any number of times, haven't you? It's yeah, not, not quite. <laughs> We've come close, but Last anyway. time in Perth a few weeks ago, yeah. three six zeros in a row. That's yeah. never been done. Yeah. yeah, not down here anyway. The question that people ask is, you roll off the throttle before mm. the finish. Yeah. Why, why do you do that? Uh, Self-preservation, mostly. Yeah, no point. Um, I'm not in a hurry to kill myself. You know, that's the, the important thing. You know, I mean, it's a serious question. Yeah, that, yeah well, that's a serious answer. Yeah. I don't want to kill myself. OK. Yeah, so Be it get, gets to a point where the wind pressure and speed and, you know, the, the big issue we've got is, is trying to pull up safely. You know, it's no point going roaring down there and then crashing. Mm. You know, it defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. We've been doing it for 10 years. We've won seven championships, so it's not from going slow. Mm. It's, OK, we haven't run fives, but, you know, we will do when it's right. OK. And do you reckon it might be right this weekend? I think if the, the weather holds out, you know, we're, um, we're right there at the moment. Bikes ready to go. Teams certainly are, and I think the track will be good. You know, I got down here on a couple of days ago and been talking to the the, um, the guys that are doing the track prep, and yeah, they've got a um, a good concoction, so I think it'll be pretty good. So, what's the recipe? If you can get to half track in it with a three something, the three eight or a three nine, that would seem to indicate a sub six is on the cards. Ideal incrementals are a low one zero. Oh, in the 60, um, 102, 104, 103, something like that mm -hmm. is, is good. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, a 27, 28 to 330. And then half track, we should be sub four, which will be 205, 208 mile an hour, which is getting along. And then, um, then it's just a matter of staying on as long as we can in the back half. Um, and, you know, the numbers should come out pretty well. So the tracks here in Australia are different from those in the States? I guess the main fun fundamental difference is our braking distance is, is, generally speaking, shorter. So we've got to be very careful that we're on the brakes as soon as possible, otherwise, you know, we run the risk of not stopping. Um, That's, you've had some dramas here with that previously, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've had it. Uh, Sydney's been the... For us, you know, we've had a lot of success here. We've held the track record and improved on it for over 10 years. Um, and we've also had a couple of accidents here. My second race, when I got onto the fuel box and uh, crashed, so quickly came back to earth. Um, did quite a bit of damage, but came out the next day, a bit beat up, but uh, we came out. And then I had a big off here in 2013. Got blown off the bike at um, uh, just under 400k per hour. Um, I remember. I was standing just down there on the side yeah, as right. you came past. Yeah, OK. And if you've ever seen a human being flying past you at 360k's an hour all by himself... Without a bike. <laughs> without a parachute, without a bike, it, it did not look good. Yeah, no, I was there. I remember it. Yeah, it was interesting, but... Uh, Anyway, that's part of it. Um, yeah, we did a lot of damage to the bike and uh, I was in out of action, uh, pretty beat up after that. And then we went to Darwin and I, I got electrocuted. Mm. Um, had a plug leak come off in Darwin and um, that put me back in intensive care at, at uh, Darwin Hospital. And 44 amps straight through the ticker? Yeah, that livened me up again and um, Anyway, uh, got through that and um, yeah, we've had a reasonably good run since then. I had an incident with the wall up in Mackay, North Queensland. We went up to do a, a, a exhibition to raise some money for the local track and whatnot and ended up having a, um, a, uh, a confrontation with the wall and smashed my leg up, um, which was my good leg actually. So now I've got two bad legs. So I, actually can walk a lot more evenly than what it used to be. <laughs> That's part of it, you know. Okay. you just got to try and minimise that as much as you can. 
All right, well, let's come back to this weekend. Perth was really good. Yep. You came off on a high because you did three really good runs, passes in a row. You didn't need to do the third one. You just did it, what the hell? Yep. We'll go down and you, it was the fastest speed of the three of them. Yeah, yeah. If not the fastest time, but still a 6-0. Yeah. So confidence is obviously high. If the bike's running well, yep. you run down the track, you've, it feels good, it feels straight, it hooks up, yep. you get to half track. At what point do you go, I think this is the one. I'm going to stay on it another two tenths longer than I normally do. Well, the trouble is you, there's not a lot of thinking on the run, believe it or not. It's, you sort of do the run before you start the bike. Um, you know, we, bring the, we start the bike here on this pad um, and you've already done the run in your head because you can't think of what you're doing when you're doing it because you, after half track you're moving at a football field per second. So you can't sort of think, I'm going to go over here, or I'm going to go over there, or I'm going to stay on longer, or whatever it is. So it's, I know what I'm, pretty much know what I'm going to do if all goes well before I start the bike. Um, and then it's a matter of executing what we do. Is it pure muscle memory by that stage? Pretty much, yeah. You just can't move or think quick enough. It's a reaction thing, uh, you know, if, if you visualise yeah, in the first 60 foot we're doing 100, you know, 100 mile an hour in 60 feet. So whatever you do reaction, whether you're 16 year old or you know, 40 years old, you're not going to change direction a lot if the bike's out of shape. Yep. So everything's got to be right. You'll, you'll know once you get going whether you know, you're in the right spot, you know, you've got your head down, um, throttles wide open and y you'll know you know uh, then it's a matter of your peripheral vision um, being aware enough to know where you are on the track because if you don't know where you are um, yeah you're okay. in a whole lot of trouble so no thinking involved pure reflex muscle memory knowledge experience comes in there's a little bit of thinking but it's more about trying to stop safely once you're on the run uh, than actually riding. R riding becomes a natural instinct. And I, I think I'm fortunate that my younger life was on dirt bikes and I spent a lot of time out of shape. So it, it sort of doesn't worry you so much if the bike's a bit out of shape um, because you're sort of used to that. It strikes me your bike's always out of shape. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's got one wheel in the air. <laughs> And the back wheel's doing whatever it wants, and you're just along for the ride. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it might look like that, but there is some controlled measure in in what we're doing or what we're trying to do as best we can. You know, you steer through your feet, and you know you've got over 1,500 horsepower um, that you're sitting on. So a lot of it's not right. You know, a lot of it about the bike is all wrong, but that's what fuel bikes are. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Well, is that too? Yeah, yeah. That's why. It's you know, why can't you just, uh, just stay on this throttle a bit longer, mate? Easy. Just don't don't roll off it. Just yep. stay yep. on it. You're only yep. doing 240 miles an hour with a with a sand trap coming up at you. Yeah, you get plenty of that. Even my wife says that. You know, just stay on longer. You know, get it out of the way and get it done. But you know, the flip side of that is we've been doing it for 10 years, and you know, we've we've got a lot of records, a lot of national records. We've got every track record in Australia. Um, we've held the national record for over 10 years. Mm. Um, and along the way, our consistency has resulted in you know, seven championships so far. So. so if anyone knows how to do it, it's probably you. Well. You and Larry. I look at Larry and you know, the Ian Kings of the world, and the, you know, there's plenty of Harley guys, you know, uh, Dougie Vansell. Um, you know, those, those guys have got, you know, 10 plus championships and it's not from, you know, not staying on the throttle. Um, mm. You know, you look at Larry, you know, probably never ever be repeated and never's a long time, but, you know, McBride's won 20 championships in a row and you look at his ETs and you look at his mile an hour, every pass is super high risk yeah. and, you know, he's alive and healthy and happy. Would you consider taking your bike back to the States and running on one of their air, airfield-like tracks where you've got a massive <laughs> long runoff where you can just 
get to the finish and just, just gently roll off the throttle, let the thing settle, and then slow it down gradually, rather than having to stand the thing on its nose and yeah. set the rear brake on fire like you do to trying to stop it. Well, it's funny you say that. When we bought the bike off Larry, you know, I said to him that I'd, I'll always buy my parts from him, and he was always there to help us, him and Steve, his brother, uh, if, if, if we needed any help. Anyway, I was buying virtually a container load of brake pads every month. And uh, Larry eventually, Larry was happy to sell me all these brake pads. And eventually he said, damn, Barbara, what are you doing buying all these pads? I said, well, now we've got to stop. We're having trouble stopping and we're warping discs every pass, going through pads and having to bleed between rounds, the brakes. And um, I think it was then he realised you know, how short our runoffs are because we were shutting off very early. They were not as good a brakes as we've got now. Um, and as you say, you know, in the States, you know, Larry's biggest fear is getting to the other end without having to get a tow because the runoffs, you know, so, so long. Mm. So um, anyway, with Larry's help, we went, we tried actually before we went to Larry, we tried a few different uh, brake combinations. Um, some years ago, you know, titanium rotors, um, who even went carbon carbon probably six or seven years ago. Um, and we just couldn't couldn't get what we wanted out of out of the you know, I'm mainly talking about the rear wheel because probably seventy percent of our braking's through the rear wheel. Um, not like a normal motorbike no. where the bulk of the braking's through the front. Mm. So we went to a, a, a Brembo caliper on the front, twin Brembos, um, and they're very good. With the rear, Larry started running a carbon on carbon combo. So he sent us that package over, we put that on, and yeah, wow, you know, it's it's been a godsend. So, okay. And you've got the confidence that when they come on down the other end, you know, they're gonna be there. I'm pretty sure this is uh, 400 metres from the finish line to here. That's not very far. No, well, that's why it's difficult to stop. I reckon in 2013, your bike came down here like a knife through butter and it cut through that fencing, yeah, hit, hit the wall. Went straight up the top. It came, when it came through here, it was doing over 200 mile an hour. Yep. The bike. I think we've just figured out why all those American top fuel riders don't come out here. <laughs> the weather's beautiful, it's a lovely place, there's, but yeah. we need longer runoffs. I wish they all, would all come out. We're, we're open for business. I'd love to see the Europeans, the Americans, yeah, the more the merrier to come out, it'd be great, it'd be something special. All right, so today's, what's today? Wednesday. And yeah. you're here already, you're the only truck in the car park already. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I did the same in Perth, we got over there early and enjoyed the ambiance of the of the track while it's quiet. The ambiance, like the, that. The ambiance. Is this your happy place? Uh, I've got a few happy places, but I enjoy coming in. Um, not only on race day and qualifying, but I enjoy talking to the other racers before it, when no one's stressed, because come race day, a lot of guys get pretty wound up, so you can't really mm. socialise with them. And then uh, after it's over, everyone's madly packing up to get home. Mm. So it's another race, so I don't mind getting in here a little earlier and, and just, you know, enjoying the, the atmosphere. It'll be very hard for anyone to catch you in the championship again. Um, you're, you're well in front and yeah. it'll only take a, a good run at, at any of the remaining three rounds for you to really wrap that up, I think. Yeah, well, we'll see. Scary. They're all scary. Um, yeah, the, the go bit's scary and the, the stop bit's scary too. Um, about the only time it's relaxing is when we've put it in the trailer and shut the back door. Um, then it's okay. not scary. Would you like another bottle of Harden Up Princess? <laughs> no, I'm pretty right. <laughs> you had a few. Yeah, I've had a few, yeah. You're a charming fellow, Chris, yep. and yep. Well, I can say, as we all wish you well. Yep, thank We're you. We're on the Cycle Drag channel with, with Jack as well. Yep. I'm sure everyone watching in the States is going, yep. run a five, mate. We're, yeah, we've yeah. got our fingers crossed <laughs> for you. We're trying. Trust me, we're trying to do the best we can. And the team, you know, team's got the bike on a on a cord at the moment so you know hats off to the guys they do a lot of work away from the track uh, all our supporters and sponsors and 
yeah, and the, we're excited to be where we are and, you know, we'll be doing everything we can to run well on the weekend. For something that runs on nitro, it's reliable, you know, um, and, you know, it's as safe as it can be for what it is. So the confidence on the bike, um, yeah, you won't get any better Fantastic. than the package we've got, yeah. So can I just say, on behalf of all the cycle drag viewers, Jack, Jack, and all the Americans and everyone around the world watching you, yep. uh, May the 4th, because today's May the 4th, may the 4th be with you. Yes. And particularly on Friday and Saturday. Okay. Let's hope it is and appreciate all the kind wishes. I'm predicting a 591. Good on you. You watch, here it is, okay. on replay right now. What happened on the last run? You told me what to do in Perth and... Oh yeah, I told you to just roll through the lights and, and wave at the crowd and, and, and instead you ran 602. <laughs> there you go. So you don't follow my instructions no, at all? Not, not, not at all. Fire!